I've got Jane Hiller and Vicki Pasco here today to talk about the Green Steps program. And I have been constantly impressed by the teachers and students involved with the program as well as the statewide coordination since I found out about this program about three years ago when I started Extension. But Jane, the program itself has been around a lot longer than that. It has. We started in 2003 and gave out our first awards in 2004. So we've been doing it for a while. Excellent. And tell us a little bit about how the program goes statewide. So uh, we, our goal is to help schools who want to establish uh, easy environmental projects that can be sustained year after year and keep kind of taking those green steps uh, to get better and better at that. So we have, uh, last year we had uh, just about 40 schools who won awards last year um, in 14 different counties. Uh, this year, uh, that number's gone up. We, we keep inching up um, every year, so. Excellent, every bit we can do to help the environment is a great step in teaching students. That's right, for our future. And I understand the program is mostly student powered. It is student powered. So our goal is to have students learning, doing, and then teaching somebody else about the projects that they're working on. And uh, although it takes a lot of teacher uh, <laughs> planning and uh, input, uh, but the, the kids are actually doing the, doing the work. Right, and that's a great way to do it, but of course we couldn't do it without our great teachers. And um, we have teachers and mentors involved with the program, right? So tell us a little about that dynamic. That's right, so it is a mentor program, so in order for schools to participate, they have to work with mentors who are um, kind of experts in their field so that uh, they can provide the guidance and resources and encouragement and then do the evaluation of the project so that um, we end up with quality projects. Great. Speaking of our wonderful teachers, we've got Vicki Pasco here. And Vicki, I was so impressed with your school projects when I visited out there. How long have you been doing the program? <laughs> Thank you. I have been, we have been involved with the Green Steps program for five years now, and we have done countless environmental pro projects. Yeah, y'all have so much going on, and we're going to get to see a little bit of that in just a moment. But in case there's any teachers out there watching and maybe get intimidated by this amazing montage, <laughs> I'm sure you didn't start out with all the projects you have today, so can you kind of start out slow? and grow it over time? Um, yes, you, you can. In our very first year, the very first thing we did was I think we planted two blueberry shrubs and one peach tree. And then from there, we started on our wildlife garden. The children dug a pond. Then we moved out to have a vegetable garden around our wildlife garden. Then we added milkweed patch, blueberries, pecan trees, greenhouse. So it just grew from there. Yeah, and now it's fantastic. In fact, let's take a look at what you've got going on. So tell us a little bit about what we're seeing here, Vicki. Okay. Um, we have students here that um, this is our strawberry patch, and our strawberry patch was put into the letters of CTE. Last year, we had a grant to build these new bins, and the students right now are taking soil, composted soil, and moving it to the bins. And it took them probably about a good month, you know, here and there, when they had the chance to work on filling it, smoothing it, and this year it is fully planted and looks beautiful. Excellent. Y'all have a nice variety planted in there? Yes, we do. Now, because school ends at the beginning of June, we tend to grow cold weather crops. Mm -hmm. Things like potatoes and beets and carrots. Um, we have 14 blueberry shrubs. The children are we're weeding around them. Occasionally we have visitor chickens. <laughs> we have rain barrels and our art club painted the rain barrels. Oh, those for are us. beautiful. And we use those rain barrels to water a lot of our vegetables. At Catawba Trail, every child is involved in recycling. Mm -hmm. And this is Plarn made from plastic grocery bags, right? Yes. And fifth grade took on that project and they cut the grocery bags into strips and we put them together in two balls and then they're donated to make uh, pad, uh, homeless shelter pads, mats. Bedrolls for the homeless. Bedrolls, thank you. Yep. Excellent. All right, the students are cleaning the pond filter. Besides having dug the pond and designing the pond, the students are responsible for cleaning the pond twice a week, feeding the fish. Compost uh, is collected daily from the cafeteria and put into our composters. What a great way to, re to recycle that extra food. It is, and we take that soil at the beginning of every school year and put it into our gardens. Excellent, help your plants grow. Yep, students there are digging out the potatoes 
And those are some of the potatoes they grew, and the children can take those potatoes home. There's our carrot crop. They're proud of those carrots. They are, and <laughs> the children can take home the carrots, and then the tops are given to some of our science lab animals like a rabbit and guinea pigs. I bet those bunny it really enjoys all those fresh veggies. Oh, yes, she does. What other kinds of animals do you have in the classroom? We have a pair of lizards. We have some parakeets. We oh. have Toby the turtle. Um, we have had trout in the classroom, rainbow trout that we raise with DNR. Those are some tadpoles that are visiting. And of course, monarch caterpillars. What do you do with those monarchs after they turn into butterflies? After they turn into butterflies, we release them in our milkweed patch. Oh, excellent. And this is another teacher and part of our Green Steps team, Kathy Mayer, and this is her hydroponics unit that she does with fourth grade. Very and cool. And they grow vegetables all year. One way that we fund our science lab projects is the students donate their old crayons, they peel them, sort them into colors, and then we pour them into new crayons and students buy them. Last year, we also took on a making bluebird houses to donate to the community. So those are some of the bluebird houses that the Garden Club built and donated to Clemson Extension Children's Garden. Cool. And then we've got some recycled art there. Yep. And there are students. We did a plant in every classroom. So every classroom got a plant, and the children propagated the plants, put them into pots, and delivered them to the teachers. Oh, wow. I bet that helps indoor air quality. Indoor, yes, yeah. it does. I think these are your air quality badges. Yep. Our students designed um, idle free zone buttons that we made and they wore them around the school, gave them out to parents that were idling in the car line. And another thing we do is we monitor the ozone level. So the kids check the ozone level for the day and then the appropriate colored flag is hosted. Wow, so they're hitting indoor and outdoor air quality. Yes. Well, thank you so much for showing us all those projects, Vicki. I really was very impressed with thank your school you. and all you have going on. Um, and you are in charge of the science lab at the school. So how many students do you get to have involved with Green Steps? Well, I have every child at our school, so approximately 650 students. And every grade level is involved in at least one, if not many, Green Steps projects. Excellent. And it may be the children, as simple as the children putting their lunch, leftover lunch, into the compost buckets, peeling crayons, making plarn, working in the garden, taking care of the animals. Cool. What a great experience for all of them to be involved. And Jane, if people, if you're, they're a teacher or they think they might want to be a mentor, how can they find out more about the program? Yes, we have a website, greenstepschools.com. Uh, so you can go on there and read all about it, about projects and schools and uh, mentors and all that kind of thing. Or you can contact me at jane.hiller at sunoco.com. Great.